Our goal is to type a value, then say how many rows we want, and have that value appear that many times. If I change this to 10, I need to see 10 of them. Now before we get to the trick, you got to go check out this video right here. That's me, Saturday Night Racing. I'm the guy on the left. Check out the link and click that thumbs up. Now the first thing we need to do in our formula, anytime we have a number of rows we need, is we need to use a formula element that can count inside the formula as we copy it down. To do this, we use the rows function. Now I'm sitting in cell C8, so I type C$8 colon C8, close parentheses. That's an expandable range that will expand as we copy the formula down. And rows will always count how many rows? 8 to 8, that equals 1. Control Enter and copy it down. If I go to any cell and hit F2, we can see the range is expanding and rows is counting from 8 to 12. That equals 5. In the top cell, I hit the F2 key. I need this formula to tell me when it's past row 5. So I say when the counter is greater than the number of rows, I hit the F4 key to lock it. Because I'm using a comparative operator, when I Control Enter and double click and send it down, I have a logical formula that tells me true and false. Everything that's true is past our marker of 5. Where there's a false, I need to show the value. Where there's a true, I don't want to show anything. So in the top cell, F2. And after the equal sign, we type if. I see it highlighted in blue, so I hit Tab. That's our logical test, true or false. I come to the end, comma. The value of true, that's all these down here. The syntax for show nothing is double quote, double quote, comma. Value if false, there's our value. And we need to lock it with the F4 key. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Change it to 7, and when I hit Enter, the formula updates. Now here's bonus trick number one. If you have Office 365 Insider, we can use the sequence function to deliver a sequence of numbers. Rows, well, we want seven rows, comma. The default is one column, so I skip that, comma. The start of our sequence is cell C3, comma. And the step or increment is 0 close parentheses. Now notice we didn't lock those cell references, and that's because the sequence function will automatically spill the results, and the formula will only be in the top cell. So when I hit Enter, that is beautiful. If I come up and change this to 5, they both work perfectly. Now when we use the new sequence function, if you look at the cell below or any of the cells below, up in the formula bar, we can see the formula is grayed out. That's because the formula doesn't actually live in any of those cells. It only lives in the top cell. We can see up in the formula bar, it's not grayed out. And that's where we have to go if we want to edit. Now if I change this to 10, it works perfectly. All right, bonus trick number two. What I'd like to do is add borders around all the numbers. But the problem is, since these are spilling, I somehow need to know when these cells get filled up or these cells lose their number. So we can use conditional formatting to conditionally apply borders. I'm going to highlight the range, Home Ribbon tab, Conditional Formatting dropdown, down to New Rule. We want to use a formula, and down here, in this text box, I'm going to click. This is where we build our logical formula, true or false, to say, yes, I want formatting. No, I do not want formatting. With my cursor in this dialog box, I click in the top upper left cell, or wherever that white cell is. By default, the cell reference is locked, and that's not what we want. So I hit F4 one, two, three times. Then I ask of that relative cell reference, are you not equal to double quote, double quote. That double quote, double quote in a formula will understand the double quotes we put over here, and it will understand the empty cells. Now we can say what formatting to apply when that comes out true. Border, outline, click OK, click OK. Change this to 5 and Enter, and everything's working.
All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. Hey, if you want to learn more about these dynamic array formulas, check out this video. And if you want to watch that BMX racing video, there it is.